I'm Marty Stauffer. If you were asked, what's your favorite animal? Would your choice be snakes? Probably not. Unlike mammals with their soulful eyes or birds with their enchanting songs, snakes rarely capture a place in our hearts. But they can capture our fascination. Take the king snake family, for instance. Its members are some of the most brightly colored snakes in North America. And they have also evolved a myriad of patterns. Spots, stripes, and bands. Their different markings reflect the diversity of the ecosystems they inhabit. And their behavior is as remarkable as their coloration. Aggressive enough to attack and swallow a rattlesnake, yet docile enough to be easily tamed for a pet. I think you'll agree that they are the king of snakes. The concept of survival of the fittest takes on new meaning as more and more animals are faced with the onslaught of civilization. Fortunately, king snakes still find plenty of food, space, and shelter in our man-made world. They range from the temperate zone of North America to the tropics of Central America. Here, an Arizona mountain king snake warms itself on the sun-baked rocks of the Chiricahua Mountains. Unlike its Arizona cousin, which has a white snout, the California mountain king snake has a black snout. It lives among the canyons and mountains from California to southern Washington. In addition to enhancing its beauty, the brightly colored bands also serve a purpose. When moving at top speed, the bands cause the optical illusion of an after image. This makes the snake appear longer than it really is, and a pursuing predator is fooled into striking an instant too late. If you've ever tried to grab a moving snake, you probably know that this effect works on humans as well. It explains why this California banded king snake relies on markings that contrast with its surroundings rather than blend in. This after image is also produced by the striped pattern of this California striped king snake. Adding to the medley of colors is the Sonoran black king snake. One of my favorites is the gray banded. This king snake is found in the mountains of Texas and Mexico. Although more accustomed to dry land, king snakes are good swimmers and often feed on fish in addition to frogs, lizards, and other snakes. Between the arid canyon rims and desert floor of West Texas, pools of spring water provide thirst-quenching relief for wildlife. The gray banded king snake adds a splash of color to the barren beauty of this landscape. It's springtime, and the urge to mate is at its peak. These two males have crossed paths while following a trail of musk laid down by an ovulating female. They size each other up with flicking tongues, using senses that are quite different from those of mammals. They don't see color and their hearing is limited to low frequency vibrations of the ground. Their primary sensor, located in the roof of their mouth, is called the Jacobson's organ. Using their tongues to carry chemical signals from the environment to this organ, they can detect food, danger, or a prospective mate. The two tips of their forked tongues fit neatly into the two ducts of the Jacobson's organ. 
The belief that their flicking tongues sense vibrations is just one of the many myths surrounding these misunderstood creatures. Body language is a powerful means of communication between snakes. Although it looks more like a dance, this combat ritual is actually a test of strength and superiority. The scuffle catches the attention of the female nearby. Yet she's indifferent to which one will be her mate, for theirs is a world completely untouched by social bonds. As with most battles in nature, this struggle is more ritualized than real. The lighter colored male slithers over his rival in what appears to be a dominance display. To me, one of the most interesting things about snakes is how the absence of limbs allows them to move with such fluid grace. Most herpetologists agree that these legless reptiles share a common ancestor with lizards and that they lost their limbs, eyesight, hearing, and the ability to change coloration when their ancestral form became a subterranean burrower. Later, when snakes readapted to the surface, they never regained many of their lizard-like characteristics. The evolution of most snakes coincided with that of rodents and birds, their major sources of prey. King snakes arrived on the scene much later and found a plentiful food source in the form of their reptilian cousins. This recent evolution may explain how two members of the same species, like these gray banded king snakes, can have such different markings. King snakes arose only 30 million years ago, yet it takes about 50 million years of natural selection to determine exactly which color pattern best enhances a snake's survival in a particular area. So king snakes still carry, within their genes, a multitude of color pattern possibilities. Battle-weary and driven by age-old instinct, the males turn their energies toward tracking down a mate.
The damp leaf litter beneath a eucalyptus forest in California is the scene for the mating ritual of a pair of California king snakes. Although the albino male lacks normal skin pigment, he can still reproduce. That is, if he manages to survive in the wild without his protective coloration. This odd couple begins courtship by stroking each other with the undulating curves of their bodies. The suitor crawls along the female's back, sometimes biting her, in an attempt to get his tail under hers. With the exception of albinism, there's very little difference between the sexes. Mainly, the female's body is longer than the male's in relation to their tail length. This is true of many reptiles, since the female carries the eggs. Also, Male snakes and lizards have a swollen section at the base of their tail produced by two organs called hemipenes. During copulation, the male introduces one of them into the female's cloaca. She signals her readiness to receive him by raising her tail. His hemipenes have spines that actually lodge into the walls of her cloaca. The arrangement of these spines called ornaments by herpetologists, are so unique that they can be used to distinguish one species from another. For several hours, the pair will be locked together to ensure fertilization. The female often loses interest before the male, resulting in the unlucky animal being dragged along while still attached. After mating, four to eight eggs will be deposited in moist, warm soil, usually under rotting logs or in decaying leaf matter. The soft-shelled eggs of snakes and lizards take in water from the soil and would quickly dehydrate without this moisture. Within 24 hours, all the young snakes in a nest will hatch. This synchronous hatching occurs with many other reptiles and is obviously a survival tactic. Apparently, predators can pick up scent from a live snake, but not from the eggs. Experiments show that nest predation is highest soon after the female lays the eggs and tapers off as her scent slowly disappears from the nest site. But once the first hatchling leaves the nest, the others must follow quickly before a hungry raccoon, skunk, or other predator is attracted by the scent.
The young are miniature additions of their parents and are fully equipped to fend for themselves. Hatchlings that manage to escape their many predators must catch at least one meal before they find a den and hibernate for the winter. Among the rocks and scrub of California lives the venomous Pacific rattlesnake. The sound of its threatening rattle instills fear in most other animals, but it doesn't frighten its arch enemy, the California banded king snake. Predatory king snake seizes the rattler and begins constriction. The tenacious rattlesnake does not give up its life easily. Even after death, its reflexes can still be quite active. In fact, humans have been bitten hours after they thought they had killed a rattlesnake. All snakes are carnivorous. But few species have the skill or necessary antitoxin in their blood to attack and devour a rattlesnake. It's no wonder they were given the name king snake, although coach whips also dine on their poisonous kin. Unlike the ribs of mammals, which are fixed to the skeletal system in both back and front, a snake has an expandable rib cage connected only to the spinal column. This allows the snake to swallow a meal much bigger around than itself. Also, both jaws move independently and the surrounding skin is able to stretch to accommodate its victim. The king snake tugs and pulls at the lifeless coils, straightening the carcass for easier swallowing. A king snake has the unique ability to devour another snake much longer than itself. It does this by literally folding the prey in half within its stomach cavity.
the bones, scales, and even rattle are completely digested. Weighed down by the heavy meal, the king snake searches for safety in a den or hole until it's ready to feed again. In the cool, dark understory of a pine woodland, a Florida king snake has frosted eyes, signifying the first stage of its skin shedding process. After the skin separates from the eyes, it begins to peel away at the head. The snake tries to snag the loose ends on rocks or bark so it can wiggle out of its old skin in the same manner we roll off a sock. King snakes molt about three to four times each year. Just like humans, their skin is made up of two layers, the dermis and epidermis. The old layer of skin begins to peel only after the new epidermal layer is fully formed underneath. The benefit of shedding is simply to renew the skin cells as they become old and worn with age. But it must also aid the healing process since an injured snake sheds much more frequently. This habit enhanced the supernatural reputation of the snake. It was interpreted as proof of the snake's immortality. The skin is dead, but the snake lives on. Our fear of snakes, known as ophidiophobia, probably stems from our fear of the unknown. But the gentle king snake gives us little cause for concern. While the facts may never overcome childhood fears, they may help to present the snake for what it is, one of the most remarkably adapted creatures on Earth. The closest most of us come to meeting one is finding its ghostly silhouette left behind on the forest floor. Let it always be a reminder of how lucky we are to share our world with the beautiful and intriguing king snakes.
We humans often look at plants and animals and only recognize the image that benefits us, like looking at a tree and seeing only firewood. Or sometimes we transform living things into images that frighten us, like visualizing a snake in the form of a devil. In our attempt to categorize organisms into good and bad, snakes have suffered the worst reputation of all. Surprisingly, they can be useful to us. The king snake serves mankind by controlling rodent and rattlesnake populations. The very presence of this voracious snake eater in your backyard will effectively scare off its venomous cousins. Learn to identify the king snakes in your area so you can help protect them and ensure there's always a place in nature, if not in our hearts, for the king of snakes. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.